very pleased to welcome Marcia, Stew Marcia Schwartz from the League of Women Voters, who's going to be talking about the pros and cons of the November ballot measures. I haven't, my mailbox hasn't filled up yet with uh, all the flyers yet. I don't know. If, really? Okay. But just a little bit about Marcia. Marcia worked for many years in the insurance industry and then moved to education with LAUSD as a teacher in history and government. She joined the League of Women Voters in 2015 as co-chair of the Voter Service Committee. She arranged for many voter registration events and trained people who are not presently U.S. citizens on how to prepare for and take the citizenship exam. She's now a nonpartisan presenter of the pros and cons of various propositions on the ballot. She's a new, uh, Los Angeles native, attended Hamilton High School and Mogan David Congregation, and is a graduate of Cal State University, Northridge, up the street. So welcome, Marcia. Thank you. you want to go? Sure do. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I want to thank you for inviting the League of Women Voters to come here and speak to you about the November election. As many of you know, the League of Women Voters was founded over 100 years ago in 1920, the year the women gained their right to vote. Its purpose was, and still is today, to promote an active, informed citizenry for women and men for all ages. The League has two um, distinct roles, education and voter service. That's where I come from. And action and advocacy. We never support a political party or a candidate. We do take positions on issues, however, but only after we've studied them at the local and state levels and arrive at a consensus. On the November ballot, there are 10 state propositions, three county propositions, six city measures. There's a lot on the ballot. Yeah, an awful lot. So I have to tell you a few things first. Um, there's a special way to look at a proposition. First, what does the measure want to do? Do you agree with that? Um, what are the real sponsors of the proposition? And does the measure create its own revenue source? If it says we're going to build a building, where's the money coming from? I seem to be interested in that. I guess don't know why. <laughs> so the propositions this year are labeled kind of differently. The first five are put on the ballot by the state legislatures. They're numbered two through six. Those are the um, propositions by the state legislature. Then the second five are put on the ballot by those people who hold up the clipboard when you go to Trader Joe's and sign. Okay, those are the ones that are the initiatives put on by the citizens. Um, also, someone taught me this trick a long time ago, I think even before I became a league member, and I'm giving it to you. A yes vote means change. A no vote means stays the same. So, oh, by the way, I will take questions at the end. All right? Not before. Okay, so we're going to start with Proposition 2. Proposition 2 is... <clears throat> and my PowerPoint didn't work real well, so we're using something from the internet. <clears throat> Should the state authorize a $10 million bond <clears throat> to build new or, re or renovate existing public schools and community college facilities? So it's a $10 million bond. Billion. With a B. Oh, with a B. There are... <clears throat> 10,000 public schools in California, that includes the charter schools, 
and there's 115 local community colleges. Let's see if I can sign this. Okay, that's what the supporters say. The state usually splits the cost for new facilities and renovations on existing facilities. So the state sells these bonds and you bar they're basically borrowing money and then they repay it plus interest over time. So the total, we've spent a total of $31.8 billion in state approved bonds for state funding for schools over the last 20 years. So we have a new bond issue and the supporters here say it will provide funding for uh, school repairs. I know recently in the hot spell, um, the local school in North Hollywood didn't have air conditioning. So, um, and it'll in, um, improve sewer lines, plumbing, and for safety measures, it'll prevent, um, ensure that there are locked doors that the locks work in schools. The supporters have raised $2.4 million. Some of the supporters are um, California Federation of Teachers, Association of California Administrators, Chamber of Commerce, Los Angeles Unified School District. The opponents say California has already spent a quarter of a billion dollars, trillion dollars, and we still have some bonds that have not been sold. And they also say taxpayers should approve 10, a $10 billion bond financing that should have been part of the um, school budget or the state budget. There is no, there's been no money raised in opposition. Um, the people who are opposed to it, Howard Jobs, Howard Jobs, Jarvis <laughs> Federation. Okay, that is a uh, initiative. Oops. This one is kind of um, easy in comparison to the state bond. This is a constitutional amendment. This changes the state constitution. Huh? Three. Three. What? Where's the answer to number two? You have to decide. Do you want the bond or not? <laughs> what? What's your question? Uh, I can't. I'm nonpartisan. I purposely did not read what the league says. I don't, okay? That's for you to decide because I've had this problem before. People say, what do the league say? This time, I can honestly say I've not read it. I have no idea what the league wants. Okay? Yes. No. <laughs> but please, you need paper? Do you need paper? Okay. So Proposition 3 is a constitutional amendment. That means it's going to change the rules in California. It's part of the Constitution. Okay. It is basically a repeal of Prop 8 from 2008. Okay. The question, should the California Constitution be amended to define marriage as a fundamental right <clears throat> in accordance with the law. Right now, the state constitution says <clears throat> that marriage is between a man and a woman. The proposal would change the constitution to say the right to marry is a fundamental right. What? It, a yes means change, no means stays the same. Okay, so the supporters who have raised over $3 million, 
<clears throat> say there's no guarantee that marriage equality will remain the law. Um, it says it proactively pro <clears throat> protects against future attends, attempts to restrict marriage, marriage rights for the same sex. Okay. No, if you vote, if you vote, so when I get my ballot, and if I want this to be changed, I vote yes. If I want it to stay just like a man and woman, I say no. I don't know if that trick was good to tell you or not, but <laughs> that's the trick that I've always learned. Um, okay. Um, by the way, there is no opposition to three. Um, of course, they've not raised any money, only the um, California Family Council. All right, that's three, four. Four, again, is a bond issue. It's another $10 million bond issue. What? Billion. Did I say million? Sorry, billion with a B. Okay. Here it says, this, um, it is for safe water drinking, wildlife prevention, Drought Preparedness, Clean Air Bond of 2024. That's the title of it. It's another bond. <clears throat> They're saying that climate change is a serious threat to the life of California's future economy and believe that climate change has contributed to this extreme, the weather conditions. Proposal, major funding from previous water and natural resource bonds are already committed. So that's why we need a new bond. They do divide the bond. You can see, I'll show you. They should, see they do 3.8 billion for water. I don't know if it'll go. Um, 1.5 for wildfire. And, you know, all this, okay? Um, I have trouble saying fiscal, so it sounds like I'm exercising, so I say monetary, <laughs> okay? The monetary effect of this proposal would, it would cost about $400 million a year for the next 40 years to replay this, to repay this bond. See if we can get down to, oh, no, okay. The supporters say that the cost of climate change to the California, to California would cost 113 billion annually. And they already said that paying the price for failing to prepare for drought and climate change, um, we would be doing disaster, we would have to pay for disasters instead of let's pay for prudent prevention, okay? The opponents who have not raised any money um, say, um, but these goals should be done through the state budget, should not ask us to put additional money out. Okay, some of the supporters, and they've raised about $600,000, uh, say yes, or Prop um, 4, the um, Labor Federation, the National Wildlife, <coughs> the state parks, <coughs> and the opposition has not raised any money, and it's the Howard Jarvis taxpayer again. Huh? Again. Okay, that's Proposition 5. Oh, that's four. Two bonds, two and four. Three is marriage. Okay, prop, let's go, that's the bond. Okay, right now, to pass a bond, 67.7% <clears throat> of the public has to vote yes. Okay, so if you want a bond issue, what this proposition is asking us to do, this is prop five, 
is to change the requirement. And this would be in the Constitution. So this is an amendment to the California Constitution. This proposition asks you to say, hey, it's OK to pass a bond at 55%. Okay, that's what they're asking. <clears throat> It would also allow um, the local governments to assess property taxes above the 1%. It's kind of a repeal of Prop 13. Okay, one sec. Raise it. Sorry. It doesn't raise, it asks you, it says the public, now only 55% of the public have to approve the bond. Now, 67, or like two thirds of the public has to say, yes, I want a bond. I'm nonpartisan. Yeah, yes. Any kind of bond. It could be for housing. Yes. Yes. And it will give you local control. So if the city or not the state, right now the state, this is a state bond. It's going to give, take the control away from the state and give it to local areas. Okay. <clears throat> you have a question? Okay. Oh, afterwards, please. It'll be easier. Okay, sorry about the PowerPoint. That's five, and that is a constitutional amendment. This is for housing. Here's what the people say, right? Um, oh, and the local taxpayer is Howard Jarvis. Okay, um, it says it would give local governments greater authority, but it would also limit the, allow the local authorities to raise the assessed value that we use under Prop 13. Yeah. The people who support Prop 5, who have raised $5 million, California professional firefighters, the AIDS Foundation, La California Label, uh, okay, California Labor Federation, um, the opposition who have raised fifty-six million, um, are supported by California Association of Realtors, Howard Jar Jarvis, um, California Chamber of Commerce. Okay, those are for prop. Five, lowering the threshold. That's what Prop 5 is. Prop 6, another constitutional amendment. The constitutional amendment was placed on the ballot by state legislatures to amend the California Constitution to make <coughs> involuntary servitude unconstitutional, even in prison. It removes the current constitutional provision allowing jails and prisoners to force incarcerated persons to work or face punishment. That's what Prop 6 is, constitutional amendment put on the ballot by state legislature. The monetary effect is they don't know. They don't know. Um, it would could possibly increase or decrease the state and local justice um, departments. The supporters say that involuntary servitude is an extension of slavery, and there's no room for slavery in our Constitution. And Prop 6 prioritizes rehabilitation for incarcerated people. The supporters have raised $63,000. 
um, the ACLU. And you guys will like this one. There is no opposition to this. Okay? There, we have two of them that they have been no opposition. Okay? Now the numbers jump. Oh, let's go down a little bit. Prop 32 raises the minimum wage. Right now, the minimum wage in California is $16 an hour. This proposition put on by the people who signed the form outside of Trader Joe's <laughs> wants to raise the uh, minimum, minimum limit to $18 an hour. Now, some um, people have already gotten a raise higher than eight, like, um, uh, food, fast food workers and medical workers have already gotten a raise. It will not affect them, whatever they've gotten. So, um, it's kind of interesting. Um, the Mat Massachusetts Institute of ne Technology living wage calculator, by the way, says that a single adult without dependents in California needs $27.32 an hour to meet basic needs. Yeah, I, I found that kind of interesting. Okay. Um, the California Legislative Analyst Office predicts raising the minimum wage to $18 would result in higher wages for workers, slight price increases, lower business profits, and uncertain impact on job numbers, which would could slightly increase or decrease. Um, it would be effective January 1st, 26. And if you're a large employer, it's uh, kind of um, different. If you have a lot of employees, it's, you would have to do it faster. The monetary effects would be workers get higher wages. Business costs would increase, potentially le leading to higher prices on products and services. A higher minimum wage would affect job availability. State and local governments would pay higher wages. The supporters who have raised 10, 000, over $10,000 say it would improve um, the standard of living for millions of workers, it would promote economic fairness. The opponents who have raised $55,000 say um, California's budget is already in sh sh shortfall and balancing the state budget, would, this would make it harder. In increased cost make living in California more expensive and may um, hurt job losses, especially in minimum wage jobs held by teens and new workers, small businesses lacking cash, um, are especially vulner vulnerable. And the proposition is largely funded by one wealthy individual, and that is Joel Sandberg. He in He's backing this along with One Fair Wage, Unite Here, Living Wage. Okay, that is a supporter. And they've raised a lot of money. And the people against it, California Restaurant Association, California Chamber of Commerce, and the California Grocers Association. That is... Proposition 32. Oh. Proposition 33. It says there, um, question, should the Costa Hawkins rental housing of 1995, a state law, be repealed so local governments can regulate rents. This has been on the ballot two times before. 
They, this is the one they call rent control. Um, that was in 2018 and 2020, you voted on it. The reason we have the Costa-Hawkins law is during the 1970s and 80s, there was a slowdown of uh, construction on rental buildings, even though the population expanded. And the result was rents were expensive. So they passed the Costa-Hawkins um, law setting a limit, and it's a state limit. So if you, you can only raise your rent so much, it doesn't account for prop if you rent out your house. Okay, it does not affect that. But the proposal um, would repeal that law and give local governments the leeway to ex enact rent control to combat the housing crisis. Prop 33 would essentially move authority over rent control from state government to local governments. The monetary effect, <clears throat> sorry, the monetary effect, effect. Hard to talk. <clears throat> It would depend on um, what kind of rent control was passed by local governments, not the state. Um, the fun Um, I know they sent limits, so if you pay $1,000, you, you can only rent, raise your rent a certain percentage. Yeah, now they, you, so if you have an apartment that you rent for $1,000 a month, I have no idea how much it costs to rent an apartment, by the way. Um, $1,000, and you're only allowed to rent to increase it 5% per year according to Costa Hawkins. But if this is repealed, it could change. They could up your rent more than 5%. Okay? So the effect, sure. Yeah, I know it's, uh, my flash drive didn't work and, that, and so we're using what's on the internet. You can read this. This is from the League of Women Voters Pros and Cons. Okay, sorry. My flash drive didn't work here, so, okay. Um, so the physical a monetary effect, we could have um, a decline in the value of rental properties, slowdown of construction, Landlords may be forced to convert some kinds of rental housings um, for sale, okay? Local property tax re revenue could decline. Local governments could increase since they carry <coughs> uh, the bo burden of implementing and enforcing any rent control. The supporters who've raised $41 million um, I argue that rent control policies will keep rent cost, rent costs consistent across the state, making apartments more affor affordable and ensuring people won't be evicted. Supporters also argue that the dramatic increase in rent prices across the state is destroying the opportunities for California, and it's much needed, but temporary fix is more affordable um, housing before affordable housing enters the market. People against this, $67 million have been raised. They say it will only worsen the problem. And they also say it would overturn over 100 current state housing laws. Um, the Massachusetts Institute of 
technology researchers found that rent control measures similar to Prop 33 reduce home values by about 25%, threatening the savings and home value of the tenants. Prop opponents also say that Prop 33 will hit seniors, disabled people <coughs> the hardest. Some of the supporters are AIDS Foundation, um, Housing is a Human Right, Veterans Voices, ACLU, Los Angeles. People against this, they've raised, oh, they, they were the ones who raised $67 million. They all, against it is California Small Business Association, Senior Alliance, California Council of Carpenters, California Chamber of Commerce. That's Prop 33. It was backed by AIDS Foundation. They're the ones who put the money up. Prop 34 um, is put on the ballot. It's sponsored by the Landlords Association. Okay? And um, so, right now, in California, we get money from the federal government for a drug program, okay, at a discount. So if the drug costs $100, we get it at a discount. Okay, and so, they want to make this discount permanent. But, um, the people who get the discount are, um, I call them HMOs, Kaiser Blue Shield AIDS Foundation, okay? So, um, the situation is that the AIDS Foundation has channeled over $100 million in recent years towards a number of state and local ballot measures and political costs. Causes. The proposal would make this um, tax permanent, but it would also limit how certain health care providers spend the revenue from that um, money they save from drugs. This is aimed at one particular health care provider. This is quite unusual. It's aimed at, at the AIDS Foundation because they sponsored uh, rent control, and they have in the past. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they're, so we're trying to tell AIDS how to spend their money. It, well, this proposition was put on aimed at the AIDS Foundation by the landlords. Remember I said the landlords? Huh? It's not clear? So we get health care providers get a discount on drugs. And then the health care providers sell the drugs, they get profit. So the profit, they're saying, should only go to health care. That all the profit that these health care providers get should go back to the patients. An AIDS Foundation is saying, I can do what I want with the money. Does that make sense? It's from the st It's given to them because they are health care providers by the state, by the federal government. They buy drugs at a discount. So if I have to buy drugs, I pay, they get it for $10. Well, the HMOs are the ones who get the money. All HMOs get money. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Haven't a clue. I have no idea. There's always, nobody likes all the propositions. They,
Oh, big, this one. People. Right? No, no, they don't. They're, uh, they, that's exact. They're doing it at whatever cause they want. Whatever they want to do. That the money that they get should go back to the patients. That's the money that they get should go back to the patients. If you vote yes, you want it to change, no, stay the same. Does it make sense? Sort of. <laughs> sort of? Okay. It is a, this is a crazy one. We're not hearing the comments. Um, do they specify the savings that these organizations get from no. as to what they spend the money yes. on? And what do they are required um, to spend the money on? State and local valid measures. That's what the AIDS Foundation, this is aimed at the AIDS Foundation. They spend their extra money, instead of giving it back to the patients, they're spending it on political things, ballot measures. To put a ballot measure on the board, I mean, uh, right. it costs money to file it. I think it's $2,000 if you want to um, put a ballot measure out. And then you collect sub signatures, and those people are paid. Okay, So they're saying, and it's, only, it's really, only if you spend over, what was the amount? Um, this proposition only applies to healthcare providers who spend 100 million on any 10 year period on things besides direct patient care. Okay? Huh. Yeah, they want the money to go back to the patient. Um, yes means change, no means stay the same. So a yes vote means AIDS Foundation now has to use the money for people. A no vote means no, they can do what they want. Does that make sense? Use the yes and no. Yeah, it's the easiest way. I don't know why I know that in this crazy thing. Okay. That's Prop 34. It is confusing because I usually say there is no um, repeal and things like that. This is an interesting thing. Not usually, does not usually happen, okay? And we have, oops, I think I was still 434. Prop 35. Here again, we have money. So um, this is kind of an easy one. Prop 35, its aim is to make permanent a existing tax on managed care health plans to provide ongoing funding for Medi-Cal. So the providers in California, like Kaiser and Aetna, are taxed. That tax money state uses to pay for Medi-Cal. Okay, that's basically what happens. They want to make that tax permanent. It's only temporary now. Okay, so. Um, the monetary effect is pretty good. And I have to be honest with you, there's nobody against it, all right? So they want to make it um, permanent. Planned Parenthood, hospitals, um, let's see, medical association. I love, this was my favorite, dental associations in favor of it. Okay, so the ma major supporters and there's um, one person against it. The the Children's Partnership, 
So they want to make a tax permanent. That's what Prop 35 is. <laughs> Prop 36, probably the one you're going to see the most of about. Provides fun. Oh, no, that's 35. Allows fel felony charges and increased sentences for certain drug and theft. So, in what day did we do this? 2014, we passed Proposition 47. And it was supposed to help us stop the over overcrowded of the prisons, right? So a lot of theft under $950, those are considered misdemeanors, all right? So that's what we have since 2014. So this proposition is asking you to reclassify penalties for theft and, and drug possession. Now they did add drug possession on this. Um, from a misdemeanor to a felony. This is to reclassify thefts, okay? A yes vote means you want to change, you want to go back, to, you want felonies, and no vote means still misdemeanors, okay? It's kind of in, um, the people who support this, let's see, the physical damage, the uh, monetary effect would reduce funding for the social programs that came about from Proposition 47, and um, it would increase state and criminal justice costs, would, um, could range to 10 to a million dollars a year. Okay, um, so it's a reclassification the supporters who've raised $9 million, um, California district attorneys. This is put on the ballot by Walmart and Target. This is the Walmart and ballot, <laughs> okay. I know you guys recognize that. The opponents to it are the ACLU and Governor Newsom. It's reclassifying for s from misdemeanor to felony. Are there questions? There should be. Um, there is, that's kind of interesting because I collect all sorts of articles about Prop 30, about all of them. And some say, yes, there's evidence that um, it will stop it. Some say, no, it won't. So is there evidence that if you give someone a felony? I don't know. Right. Right. Yeah, but a felony is 25 years in prison. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, right. Right. And even the two people who, I mean, Walmart and Target, people are stealing from Walmart and Target. Oh, we, um, yeah, 47 was lower. 47 was... Crime is much lower. Crime rate of theft is way lower. And all of a sudden, why is it going up? Because the punishments are gone. Yeah, punishment... Yeah. However... Go for it. You want to punish it better? Go for it. Right. I mean, it's a yes. You want it to go back? Uh, to be specific, this... Proposition is just relating to drugs and, and, and theft. And for thefts under $950. Right. With two prior drug or theft convictions. Right. If you have two prior, it's a felony. Yeah. Okay. What? 
So the, the document we're looking at is a publication from the League of Women Voters, is uh, that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, within this document, there are several statements that say, you know, those in favor say the following, those against say the right, following. Right, the supporters and the op opponents, right. How do we know that those statements are true? Uh, and, um, and they I take a I consensus. I mean, this is what is, you're, I think it's going to be similar to what's on the ballot that you will get in October, the beginning of October 17th. And uh, how October do we, well, my, my, I guess the question came to my mind based on the very, very first proposition there when it says, you know, 109, bi <coughs> excuse me, 109 billion dollars is unspent. Is that true? Yes. Yes, they're not putting out anything that is not true. We still okay. have like bonds, you're talking, yeah, we have bonds that have not well, been that, sold. Again, yeah. in that particular example. So yeah, we, that we example. Take, we can take what's in here and what's in the voters pamphlet as right. possible. Yes. Yes, sir. Wait, somebody has, huh? I am taking questions because it's over. Okay. I can absolutely, an hopefully answer some of you. Okay, I'm, I've got the mic. Okay. Uh, the question is, what drug charges, what, what, what is fentanyl? It's fentanyl. Selling it, by using it? It just says, I think, own, having fentanyl. Uh, having probably selling it. Having and fentanyl means a, a, a a, uh, a felony. A felony. <laughs> it should it just be for theft. What, they threw you, in the drug thing, which is really well. They want you to vote for it. You know that's why you look at each ballot measure. Correct. I don't think it's just relating to fentanyl. It's no, just it's certain just drugs, drugs, and there's a list. They, it, yeah, it is all drugs, but it added fentanyl. It added fentanyl. Okay. What you're saying, what the student says is that the sentence, for if you're convicted of, uh, of either the theft or the other, will be changed from a misdemeanor to, to a felony. felony. Why should that, if the problem isn't what, what the offense is, the problem is whether the police are arresting anybody for anything. A misdemeanor is still a misdemeanor. It's a crime. It can put you in jail for a year. Uh, the problem doesn't seem to be whether it's a misdemeanor or a felony. The problem seems to be whether the police are enforcing the law. Um, either way. That is your opinion, and I didn't put this on the ballot, okay? I, no, absolutely doesn't. It doesn't say that the police must do something. Are there any other questions? Do you have Should a question? We, uh, oh. She's just reading the thing. Hey, ben, yes. Hold on. Well, what you are presenting is available on the League of, uh, League of Women Voters. Yes, that website. is from their website. Okay. Yes, it is. Um, brief question. Sure. Does this have anything to do with funding of uh, uh, drug rehab yes. treatment programs? Yes. It would Re um, reduce it? It would reduce it. Yeah, it would. They, that's one of the things they say. Well, the rehabilitation program. Yes. Why would it? Because we wouldn't be spending money on under Prop Forty Seven, the one that's a misdemeanor. There's money set aside for rehabilitation. If this goes through, they're taking the rehabilitation out of the proposition. Okay. Does that make sense? I hope I explain it. Okay, a couple more. Yeah, you do. It's really crazy. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it is. Yeah. An observation, if you put more folks for possession of drugs and or petty theft in jail, yes. a local county jail, say, uh, that means the uh, jails, which are now overcrowded, will be more apt to release earlier these new arrestees and or they will release people who are uh, in jail with more serious crimes because you'll have more of the lower level folks coming into the jail. So, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Uh, you know what? I don't know. I don't know what they do. Okay. But there's also a ballot on here where you get volunteer and servitude. Right. If you're 
penalized. You have to do the labor. Well, except that one of the ballot admissions says we're not forcing you to do servitude. Right, right. but that means that that's in servitude is currently in place. Yes, it is currently in it. place. So if you get charged with this petty crime, or these, well, I don't think it, you would. It's you know you have to be um, have two priors. So it's not like and like if I came in and took the candy bars, um, I don't have two priors. So, okay, does that make sense? Any other questions? Hold on, hold, hold on. Sure. Could you explain 33 a little bit more? Which okay, 33 is one? rent control. Okay, right now the state sets the limit on how much you can have rent control. The state says, so if I move to Sacramento and my apartment costs so the state tells me how much, it, not how much I can um, charge for it. So if I come to Sacramento and want an apartment, the owner has the right to charge me whatever he wants. The problem, <clears throat> the thing is, the state now says they can't charge you more than 5%, Marcia, next year. 5%. They, Prop 33 says, I don't want the state involved. I want local governments. So my apartment in Sacramento, can the Sacramento <clears throat> City Council can decide, well, we can increase Marsh's rent 10%, 20%. They can change that. That's what the law is saying. Now the local governments have control. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, I just wanna say that currently, whatever the state law is, there are local laws about rent control and they override the state. They, in LA County, it's whatever LA County, there's the independent areas of LA County right. have their own law, rent control laws and the city has its own rent control um, laws. I think, what, uh, Beverly Hills I, has their I own rent know. control? What? Doesn't Beverly Hills have their own laws? I don't know about Beverly Hills. I think Burbank LA County does. has its own, LA City has its own, and that's what stays. And I don't know how this particular initiative or whatever it is an initiative would um, affect that. And I think people need to research that and find out. Okay. By the way, there are three county measures. Can I tell them real quickly? Sure. There's um, proposition uh, measure A. It is a county measure. Um, right now, and I don't have any slides for it, um, in the past, when we have tax, when I buy something at the market and I get charged my tax, a half of a cent, I mean a fourth of a cent, goes to the homeless. Okay? Measure A is saying we want to raise that amount, not a fourth of a cent, a half a cent. Whatever on your tax, you know when I get I buy my water at the market, whatever my taxes, they're gonna raise it a half a percent. Like I know when I go to the city of Burbank, their taxes are higher. Yeah, so, okay, that's what they wanna do. That's proposition A. They just wanna raise, um, yeah, yes, raises, no, stays the same. And um, the county measures take only 50% to pass. So it's kind of interesting. Some of the sponsors are United Way, ACLU. Oh, and guess who opposes it? Howard John? Oh, good. Okay. Three minutes. Okay. We have Measure E. Measure E is kind of interesting, too. Um, it is called County District and Fire Emergency Response Infrastructure Parcel Tax. It's a partial tax on your home. They want to charge you um, six cents per square foot. So my house is 2,000 square feet. So I get charged $120 more on my taxes. And the money goes to the fire department, okay? That's a pretty simple one. Measure G, what you will hear a lot about. The county supervisors put this on the ballot, three of the five. They want to increase the size of the supervisor, right, 
They want more to be more supervisors, right? And they want an, uh, a county executive officer who handles all the um, paperwork. That person is elected. They said, I like this, there will be no costs or tax increases. Measure G says that no new costs or taxes will pay for this position. Okay, that's Measure G. Those are the ones that are on my ballot. And your ballots will come out October 7th. The early voting locations, will the temple be a loading, voting location? Oh. Oh no, probably not temples, right? Huh? Libraries and the parks. Often it's the parks. The, I don't think the libraries are doing it this year. I don't know. They are doing it um, at parks because they need bigger locations. Parks and centers, there's that center on um, Balboa. Uh, yeah, Balboa, that might be open. It'll open the 26th of October. Join me in thanking Marsha and the League of Women Voters for giving us our first preview of uh, the uh, ballot initiatives. Just quickly, um, 